right, y'all. So, finally, we have season two of Chasing Dallas. Y'all, it was given what it was given. So, let's give it what we got. What does the cat do? Alright, so the episode starts off, the season rather, starts off with us seeing Reese G getting into a truck and heading to therapy. And in his confessional, he's like, I've been through a lot. Um, my Dallas girls have tried me. The Atlanta girls have tried me. And my initial thought was, mm-mm. Let's not do that. Like, it's never good when you pull people into a story that they're not a part of. Like, Atlanta franchise and Dallas franchise are two totally different things. And even if y'all do have y'all own differences, it shouldn't really be addressed until that party is able to come and discuss it with you. And then the confessional is just you rehashing and regurgitating and you reviewing the scene. You know, like, but for you to just be poking fun and using, like, you know, flashbacks, that ain't, and then the people who you did it to, bitch, like, you know these girls gonna clap back, and I think you kind of took the Kardashian method with this one, you kind of wanted some pushback, you kind of wanted some controversy, you wanted people to talk about it, because it's gonna bring in more viewers. I get it, bitch, I get it. Now, Reese, this didn't come from me, but King Kang has said that... That truck you had got in was not yours and you was fronting because you really have a white Oldsmobile. I don't know this to be true. I don't make the news. I just report her. And, you know, if that is your car, speak on it. If not, then baby, you know, because the next time we had saw you, you was getting out of King Kang car. And, you know, if you got the big body like that, I would have just pulled up in style, bitch. Like, boom, boom. The big body and the big body. You get what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, I, but, uh, let me not tell you down when I lifting you up. Bitch, that little gold Cleopatra look you got going on. Yes, ma'am. And that look you had when you was promoting the little t-shirt with the woman holding the money. I like that look on you. I like that look a whole lot. I like that look a whole lot. But that Cleopatra look with that brown backdrop gave you everything, mama. Skin was popping. You hear me? Markel. Markel is back and he is turning his books into films because he feels like the GP don't really read no more. So he want to turn everything into a visual so that people could be more interested in his stories. But in his quest to do all of that, just like Reese, you throwing shade at the Atlanta people. Like, why in the hell did you have to bring up Q's book? Like, why? And then y'all shady production on oh, Dario. I love you, boo. I love you down. But, bitch, you know you could have blurred that shit a little bit more or just showed the damn pages. Who else is black and bald-headed on Atlanta cast? Who else? Like, you... Like, y'all... Why? Why? His book's selling. Like, like he said, his book is selling. So, you are running into the financial woes as far as your book sales. He ain't got to turn his quotes into movies because they're doing just fine. Well enough for him to move from Atlanta to L.A. And believe me, bitch, I'm taking a trip to L.A. tomorrow. It is expensive. Okay? It's expensive as fuck to visit. And this motherfucker living down there now. So, obviously, something is doing something. George, he plays with dead people. Um, <laughs> George, I like your style. I like that you're so well put together. Um, but I hate what it's done to your ego. I think you know you look good. You know you're well put together. You know that you um, are financially comfortable. And you have used that as helium to blow your head up the size of Dallas. Like, girl, you play with dead people. Like, and I ain't never, I've been in the South my whole life, and I ain't never seen what was all of this. Uh-uh, what the ass shit was. I, I ain't never seen nobody get crowned. And before my brothers died, I was at funerals every weekend. Funerals and weddings, okay? Because my mama knew a lot of people. So, well, she knows a lot of people. I say new because she don't really hang with half them hoes no more. Like, my mama really, she exed everybody out of her life. She maybe got like three or four friends out of all the people she used to know. But this is not about my mama. 
anyway, like, I ain't never seen that. But whatever, you know. You could tell it was an old Southern church because they had that for Micah fake ass grass shit on the stairs. So you knew that, girl, it was going to be some flower bringing and some slow singing up in that bitch. Dior and Ariel. Ariel. I'm that I see. Um, y'all cute. I love Dior style. Them knots was giving me every piece of Cleanse on the walls, my succulite. Come on, let me go, my succulite. Like, it was just giving me everything I needed with the little two braids. Um, I got woof and stuff with my half roll puff. Yeah! Rock on with you. Yeah! But anyway, moving on. Um, love y'all's conversation. Um, Dior, it seems like you're the passive caddy messy one. Like, I ain't saying nothing, but I'm just gonna throw it out there so she can bounce the, the shade back off. Like, have you have you ever met Reese? You ever met King Kane? You know, I thought since y'all was, you know, and then she just, it's like banter. She bouncing the shade right back. Well, I don't know him, and usually the designers I know be in the fabric store. Which leads me to believe that you know of King Kane because you know that the materials he used are not commonly found in fabric stores. The safety pins are this to that. Like, how would you know that he a designer and don't be in the fabric store? How would you know that? You gotta know of him. Like, Y'all gotta stop with the fake shit. And I understand. I, and I'm not coming down on the Chasing Reality series or franchise. I'm not doing that at all. Because y'all following the formula that y'all see on television and it works. I'm talking about reality TV as a whole. I just... And when they ask me to do it, I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna be annoyed as fuck. And I'm gonna be dry as fuck in my opening scene. Because I hate acting like I don't know somebody that I know. Yes, there is a happenstance chance that you might be on a cast with somebody that you don't know and you meet them on camera for the first time. But a lot of these people you know gonna be on the cast. You know already looked them up. You know already researched them. That's the gay way. We all do it. Hell straights do it too. Like, you know who you working with. You know these people. So they be like, I ain't never heard of you. Like, and that's my disdain with George. What do you do? What do you? Carrie, I like you a whole lot. Carrie, you are a real artist and you are a real songwriter because I'm a songwriter. And what you did in that little living room scene with that other dude is what I do in the studio. You, like you hum to the music and then you hum a melody and then you come up with the words, bitch, that song that you writing, no, bitch. Whew. Yes, ma'am. I don't think we ready for that. Like you, you putting it on us like. If y'all haven't already, go and pick up his album DNA. I need to be in that number. I need to go listen to it. I'm going to give it a listen today. Um, but the songs that I've heard, the little snippets that I heard on the show, bitch, she was giving it. You can sing. You can sing, rather. Like, yes. Trey. So we meet Trey at the same time we go to this tattoo party that Markel, I think, was calling George about. Okay, so I'm not trying to be funny, but Trey does give off a... I could have been a woman in a previous life, T. Or I may be trying to go that route now, and I just, I don't, you can pass for a man or a woman, honestly. Honestly. And then with your banter, and then your, when you really get into your judge, like, yes. And then in your confessional, your lips was like, dark. They were bronze, like, what was that? It made your lips look dead. Like your lips had no more life. That's what, <laughs> that's what it was giving. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. So we get to the tattoo party. And. Reese and Aubrey? Am I missing something? Maybe I need to go back and watch season one. Because I am missing something. I am missing something. And I don't like to watch season one. Because honestly it's so all over the place. By the time you get to the reunion, you still confused. Like, it's so much going on, you really don't know. You can't keep up. But apparently, something happened between Aubrey and Reese, and they were supposed to have a conversation, and then now they're not having a conversation. George, okay, here's the whole thing when I was saying about you follow these people, you know these people. George and King Kane, like, that was too much. Everybody know I have multiple streams of income, but the only one you wanted to talk about was the fucking funeral home. So, bitch, what, what else do you do? What else do you do? Since everybody up here know, because when you said everybody know what you do, they was quiet. Hush, oh, hush, oh, because nobody knows what you do. Because 
Nobody co-signed that. And then you, what? Who are y'all? What do y'all do? And King Kane, I love this bitch. He was like, you know me. You follow me. And you know I'm a designer. No, I don't follow your line. I follow you. Bitch, I went to King Kane's Instagram. If you are his Instagram friend, you know that he's a designer. His, girl, okay. King Kane Clothing is his name. And if you follow him on that entity and y'all have been in the DMs or if y'all been back and forth, like, at some point, you realized that he was in fashion. At least. At least that. If it don't give you fashion designer, at the very least, it give you stylist. It's you who we don't know. Like, you play with dead folks and you Sloan King and... Now, I'm gonna take this home with Reese. Um... With the conversation, but then no conversation. When you put up your receipts in the confessional, the confessional was like, okay, I'm done with him on a personal level, but if he wants to have a professional conversation, I'm willing to do that. Aubrey then says in the audio clip, we will have our conversation. You, no, uh-uh, I ain't got nothing to say to you. But then you come back in the parking lot, have a conversation with him about the fact that we don't need to have a conversation. Mama, What? are you talking about? Do you want to have a conversation with Aubrey or don't you? You said you don't know why y'all stopped talking, but Aubrey stopped doing your tracks and was like, no, 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 mama. We had paragraph long text message threads where we discussed all of this. You was in your feelings because I was hanging with Oliver and we talked about it. One would be led to believe that y'all solved whatever it was going to be solved in that text message, right? But now that y'all back, it's uh, that's a, so what is it gonna be? What is it gonna be? Hopefully by the end of the season, we'll see what it's gonna be. But y'all, that's what episode one was given. It gave what it gave, and I gave it what I had. Make sure you are liking, commenting, and subscribing, and don't just watch my reviews, bitch. Go and watch Chase and Dallas, it's good. It's good, bitch. It is good to let busy on, okay? Same place, same time.